lots of colourful LED lamps. I got these a while ago. I'd done so many lamps at the time that I thought, okay, I'll give you a break just in case you get LED lamp fatigue. That that This would be the wrong channel if you get LED lamp fatigue. But these ones are really interesting because if you look at the traditional uh, round uh, LED lamps that are based on the sort of golf ball festoon type lights, the circuit boards are just like this one. They've actually got the little circuit board in the base and it's firing into these. So when you light them up, and this is uh, where you'll see another interesting thing, when you light them up, it tends to be, it, it's not bad, but you get this darkness around the base. It all tends to be focused in the front. Now, can you see the power reading of this on the hoppy meter? Because it's displaying zero. And the reason it's displaying zero is that because, although this is drawing about a watt or so, the power factor is so bad, the hoppy meter has actually thrown a cream puff because uh, it just does not like really extreme. If you just stick a capacitor across it, it won't try and say uh, power zero, but you know, the current through that capacitor is really huge. It's seeing um, probably about 40 or 50 milliamps through this, but it's not displaying it because the power factor is so bad. Let me plug one of these lamps in. So this one uh, has a cluster of about eight LEDs. Now, what I've found in the past, don't know if it's going to be visible if I project it up here, don't know. What I've found in the past is that with some of these, they just had the LEDs in inverse parallel to avoid needing a rectifier, and just on each half wave, half of them lit, and it was really shuddery. With these ones, I can see a bridge rectifier inside. This one is showing a current of 50 milliamps, which is actually quite high. Hmm. Uh, 1.4 watts, but the power factor is 0.1, basically, which means that it's going to cost, it's showing 1.4 watts, it's probably going to cost the equivalent of 14 watts to run uh, if your unit is, if your meter is measuring reactive power. Or if you're running it in a generator, it's going to limit the length of the stun because the, that's the current that effectively the cable will see and the generator will see. It's just the way it works. It's a, a compromise to actually keep the circuitry in these really, really simple. Now, another thing that's interesting is, say for instance, this green one. Um, I think that is actually green LEDs in this. I, I've just proven myself wrong by plugging that in. I was expecting these ones to have um, coloured LEDs, uh, possibly, or in some of them I've noticed they just use all white. Say for instance, blue would be all cold white LEDs. But in this case, it's such a deep, rich, psychedelic blue. Uh, that's something I didn't even finish talking about. Keep in mind that uh, the circuit board is at the back here and the light fans out. And I was saying that these caps have sort of a dark ridge. Uh, this projects that light out in a fan and makes the whole thing, it's not maybe showing up as well as it could, but it, it's projecting it out and it's almost as if the shape of these caps is designed to accommodate that fan of light coming out from the LEDs. It works very well. Uh, the green one does appear to have it's such a saturated green. It looks like it's got green LEDs. I think the white one, the yellow one, has white LEDs because uh, the yellow kind of complements that, although it's very hard to tell. It's, they've actually done it really well. Uh, I'm just going to try all these colours. I should have tried them beforehand. That one looks like white LEDs in the back and uh, the red definitely looks like red LEDs because it's a really deep, psychedelic, rich red. That's very good, actually. I like that. And the voltage is lower, which means the power's uh, showing is lower. And these are cold white. We all hate cold white. Well, I hate cold white. Ugh. Harsh. Okay. Right. So now we've uh, seen them lit. Let's uh, take one of them apart and take a look at it. So I'm going to take one of the cold white ones apart because it deserves it. Am I going to be able to force it apart in my hand or am I going to have to get the vice in? Let's get the vice of knowledge up here. And see if I can get this out. Uh, sometimes it doesn't go to plan. But that's all right. So let's see if I can lever this out. It's not going to plan. It's mutilating the base, but that's all right. This is the sacrificial lamp that's designed to reveal the secrets. I had one of these go bang while I was making a video. And uh, not one of these particular ones, it was one of the round ones. And what had actually happened was the circuit board was so close to the side of the casing here that it actually had a wee tiny whisker and it touched it. And all it 
for some reason it was it was fine for X amount of time, but then it popped and in the process it blew itself clear. I think in that video I went and got the lamp and uh, then took it to bits. So this uh, this has a telltale uh, rectifier on it, which means it's got a big capacitor in the back. There's a big capacitor and a smoothing capacitor. That's nice. The smoothing capacitor, this is maybe going to hold a charge. Let's uh, give it the finger test. No, it's not holding a charge. Uh, the value of the capacitor is going to be fairly high. It's 680 nano. That's enormous. It's enormous. Uh, 47 microfarad at 50 volts. That explains how smooth it is. That's straight across the output of the bridge rectifier. Uh, we've got the inevitable. Hold on. 474. Uh, another 474. So across each of these capacitors, we've got a resistor, and that's probably more to just act as a slight load so if you put these lamps into a typical normal lamp holder in your ceiling it it's not going to glow at night because of the slight leakage you get through the um through the um the wiring the capacitive coupling between cables that's quite common if you put in an led lamp particularly where you've got two-way or three-way switching and uh, it just glows or it pulses it's because of that leakage another thing we've got which is almost certainly in series with the led D's is a 470. Can you see that? Let's uh, turn the light on it. 470. Uh, that is a 47 ohm resistor. 47 and 0 is a multiplier. And that does appear to be in the series with all the LEDs. So I could doodle that down. It's not going to be terribly exciting. It's going to be it's going to be predictable. But I'll doodle it anyway, just for the sake of uh, completeness. So we have the AC come in, and it's going through that capacitor, which is 680 nanofarad. That is massive. That is really quite unusual. Uh, it's rated 250 volts, which is just a wee bit tacky. If that's the DC rating, that's kind of pushed. They've done that for size. That also has a 470K resistor, 474, 47 and four zeros across it to discharge it. Um, uh, it's got the it goes through the bridge rectifier bridge rectifier full bridge rectifier that's uh, this little component here uh, so that's a plus and the minus uh, there's a lead going straight to that and the output has the electrolytic across it which is uh, quite a generous value but it's, uh, it's one of these things uh, I did another test in a lamp where an LED had failed, I, I think I was taking it out in a decapped on the LEDs, I actually broke the tip off it. And I left it on to see what happened with the over voltage across the capacitor. What actually happened is, because this red capacitor was limiting the current through, it just gradually heated up and then it just swole up and just slid off. It didn't just go bang like many of them do. And we got the resistor across here that uh, 470k again, which is also, that's just sort of clamping down the, uh, it means the LEDs go out quite quickly when they're turned off and also gives a slight uh, path for the leakage current to stop them sort of glowing when they're not supposed to be on. And then after that, it's just uh, lots and lots of LEDs. No surprises. If, you, if you're a regular on this channel, you'll recognise this circuit because I draw it so often because it's a really common circuit. I have missed a component. Can you tell where I've missed the component? It is the resistor between... It appears to be from the positive. It's the resistor here, which is 47 ohm. I'll just colour that in just because... I, if, Otherwise, it looks like a fuse. And that's it. How many LEDs? We get eight LEDs. And I'm guessing those are just standard LEDs. It would have been nice if they'd used the multi-chip LEDs because if they had, uh, that would have made it slightly more efficient and brighter. Um, but in this type of product, it's most likely that this will light uh, with just the low voltage of the meter. I could be wrong. No, it's just, it's lighting there. So I don't know if you can see that glowing. It's uh, just a single uh, three volt drop. So that's why the power factor is so absolutely appalling.
and it just makes it cheap for them to make using standard LEDs. They could have used the six chip LEDs uh, and just run them at lower current and uh, achieved a, a much more efficient fixture that way. Uh, but that's uh, but they didn't. They're quite neat. I do like the sort of fan shape, the sort of trumpety shaped output. That kind of it does fit into the uh, the way they're generating light in the base. How's the clearance around the edge for tracks? It looks okay. It's not mega clearance, but it's enough. It would have been nice if they'd put a wee bit of tape around that, but they didn't. I would say the clearance at the edge is mm, just under a millimetre, so it's not that much clearance, is it? Mm. Interesting stuff. I wonder how these would fit into the rubber seal of a standard... Uh, that's another thing that it might, because it's tapered like that, these might work really well in Festoon because they would just, instead of being the seal having to cut round a rounded surface, it would actually be going into a taper so it would wedge its way in and seal. I wonder how far that would come out in that. Probably up to about here. But um, they're, they're quite neat. I do actually like them. They're, they're quite unusual and, uh, and they do the job.